Hi, welcome to Sugar Free. Um, this is a reading for all signs, sign by sign. Um, I felt compelled to do this today. Um, all the signs will be time stamped in the comments. Oh, sorry, in the description box or perhaps in a comment. Um, I felt compelled to do this because my sense is that we are entering, certainly in the English-speaking world, um, a very unusually intense period for the next month or so. Um, and I do foresee some difficulties in a very general sense. You know, we're not coming up for summer with full employment and... Uh, uh, happy times. So, well, in Australia you're coming up for summer, but you know what I mean. I wanted to go sign by sign. I'm going to pull one card for each sign and explore the possibilities it offers us for um, coping, basically. So, one more shuffle. Shuffled a lot before coming on. Sorry, one more. I will be shuffling between cards as well. So I'm going to start with Aries. Okay. Right, Aries. You get the magician. So the magician is uh, really... <laughs> Kind of the next step on from from you Aries if we see you as the first card the first sign that would be the zero card the full so what this is um, inviting me to tell you is that you do not need through this period to be going back to first principles um, you do know what you are um, the message I'm getting from this is just keep going with whatever it is that you're doing because the uh, the magician card is the card of doing it's the card of I do I can the full card is the card of I am I exist and this is therefore I can we have the magician here with all the tools and accoutrements on the table and um, all the the equipment he needs and you know he's in a good place here so um, use what you will already have Aries use the good qualities that you already have uh, you know what they are and um, clearly you do know what they are because we're one on from the full there's no discovery here about what and who you are um, it's a question of continuing to um, manifest what you already do and um, I would say also there's an invitation here to uh, consider some new possibilities in terms of what can be done because when things are um, chaotic um, which my sense is that they are going to be for the next month or six weeks or so um, all sorts of new possibilities can be uh, can be thrown up by that chaos um, but it takes a, it takes a steady mind to be able to view them when they come because they can come and they go and go very very quickly so um, try if you can to um, keep your head just stay who you are and um, try to yeah keep your head keep your mind steady in order to spot the inevitable opportunities that will be thrown up during this time and um, I think anything that you grab hold of like he's grabbed hold of that glass there um, will be serving you for a long time through into the future uh, it's a kind of um, recalibration um, I had the word earlier I was out for a walk realignment there's a realignment we're just at the beginning of a fundamental realignment so what plays out over the next four to six weeks is going to set the tone for 
a good while. Um, there's a, a paradigm shift occurring and uh, they are rarely comfortable. Okay, so that's for Aries. Let's move on now to Taurus. Taurus for the next four to six weeks. What can be useful for Taurus to bear in mind? Okay. Right, Taurus. Aha, uh -huh. okay. We get the moon. Um, actually, sorry, I'm going to shuffle that again because I didn't put the magician back in. Wouldn't it be funny if... And now I've just spilt the cards. <laughs> I did, I did all. <sighs> sorry, Taurus. I'm Taurian, so I'm just going to keep going. That's what we do. Can't get through one bit of the fence. You go and find another bit of the fence and just keep pushing. Okay, okay Taurus, let's try again. <laughs> right, we've gone from the moon to the sun. Um, okay, the sun immediately follows the moon in uh, in the tarot, so uh, that was a good call. <laughs> um, now, I think Taurus, because um, there's some really, really major stuff going on with Uranus, and Uranus is transiting through Taurus at the moment hasn't done that for about 80 something years so this tumultuous ground shifting that is going on is something that is actually quite strangely um, comfortable for you um, it's not unexpected there's something uh, familiar about it and um, I think the invitation here is for you to um, not worry too much when the ground begins to shift underneath your feet because it is something um, not not saying it's something usual for you but there's something appropriate about it for you Taurus. Um, so I think perhaps one little bit of straight advice I would give is if you're okay, um, perhaps don't be too public about that because a lot of people aren't going to be okay. But it's more like a kind of, it's not a sort of, you know, everything's going swimmingly sort of okay. It's just a, yeah, I know what's going on. I understand what's going on and um, I'm just riding it. You'll be riding this time and um you know you will be basically comfortable so you know you're in a good position Taurus to um help okay right put that back in so that's for Taurus and the sun okay Gemini Right, you also have the magician, as did Aries. Okay, but it's it's a different. This is really different. Okay, there is great possibility through this uh, this process of realignment for you, Gemini. There's great possibility, um, real, real creative potential showing itself here. Um, I'm getting a feel, a feeling of, of, of real excitement and um, kind of almost a little bit manic. So, oh, I could do this and I could do this and I look, this is happening and that means that and that. There's some, that's the feeling that's coming through me for you with the magician. Very different from how it was for Aries. Um, everything's bubbling and 
sort of stuff are popping up here and popping up here. And um, I think there's an invitation to, to, to look very open-mindedly at um, all these um, possibilities that will be, and new ways, new ways of thinking. It's like, oh my God, I could do that with that. I never thought of that. And if I just kind of ditch that bit, then I can pull that into the fore and really, really active, great activity around this. Um, and um, I would be aware that uh, it might be a good idea to kind of um, try to t take a breath between these various things. <laughs> take a breath um, because there is a slight danger that you might run so fast that towards this and towards this and towards this that there's a, a sort of possibility of a, of a loss of footing but that might be my Taurian nature um <laughs> expressing that but yeah just remember Gemini in this time of this huge excitement and a, as I say a real sense of seeing very different ways that things that are already there could be combined with things that are newly coming up um very innovative so do remember to take a breath between um between ideas and between projects um you know some things manifest and stay some things manifest and disappear so if you are able to um take a breath between thoughts you might give just enough time for um, things to show whether they are uh, keepers or letter goers. Okay. Right, Cancer now. Okay, we have the death card. So this is about letting go. This is about allowing what is leaving to leave. Um, some stuff will be leaving and it will be leaving forever. Um, we're going to be seeing a, a, a great change. And um, what this is... Um, inviting you to do is to um, not fight the process here of this scythe sweeping away these trappings. Um, I <laughs> There's no way, all right, and I just want to point out that the artist's palette down at the bottom there does not get caught up in the scythe. So creativity remains, creativity of thought, creativity of action, creativity of will remains. Um, there is no way when things change so drastically on the macro that there isn't some effect on the micro. Um, and we are better served, we better serve ourselves on the micro by um, not mixing up the micro the individual life with the macro, the, the worldly situation. Um, because if we do that, then the sense of change, the scale of the sense of change can um, affect us in a way that makes us more, um, more prone to uh, fear of this than is necessary um, in terms of our own individual lives. So um, allow what's playing out on the worldly level to play itself out. It will affect us all on the, um, on the individual level. But yeah, I think uh, re retain your investment in your own creativity and um, try to uh, delineate clearly between change on the macro and change on the micro. Okay.
that was Cancer. Okay, we'll move on to Leo now. we get the devil. The invitation here, Leo, is to examine examine what it is that you don't want to um, lose and um, be mindful of the fact that um, some things that don't work in our favour but that have been present in our lives for a long time might feel as hard to lose as things that do work in our favour. What I'm saying is the negative, unhelpful things in our lives can be as, can feel as valuable to us as the positive, helpful things in our lives. Um... I think we all know deep down what is uh, good for us and what is not. And yeah, it, this, this this is about addiction. This is about addiction. Um, you know, it usually is with the devil, but this thing of valuing and holding on to that which is not good for us. This is kind of a, a quite accurate description of addiction. So... This is an opportunity, Leo, to um, really see those things for what they are. And if conditions are changing in such a way that there is an opportunity for them to um, be more easily than usual slid out of the door of your life, take it. For example, if you're a smoker, and for one reason or another, your regular stuff is not um, available at the shop. See what it's like a day without it, rather than uh, skirting around town looking for it. See what it's like. Okay. All right, Virgo. All right. <laughs> okay, Virgo. Whatever happens through this period of fundamental change, um, up is still going to be up. Down is still going to be down. Rain is still going to be wet. And the ground is still going to be solid. Okay? Uh, it's realignment, not the end of the world. <laughs> So, because um, the, the emperor is um, top-down authority, and it's top-down authority of what is, okay? It's, uh, yeah, you're still going to have to pay your taxes, and um, food you like is still going to taste good. And uh, there's a lot of change coming, but a lot of things are not going to change either. As I said, this is realignment, not the end. Okay, it's the end of some things, but it's not the end of everything. So however um, nervous this um, tumultuous period makes you feel, rest assured, Virgo, that um, when we're out the other side of this, um, what's good will still be good. What is not will still not be. What's right will still be right and what's wrong will still be wrong. And I think... If anything, by the end of this uh, four to six week period, we're going to be able to see that much, much more clearly um, than uh, than we have hitherto. Because part of why this is all changing is because um, these very, very basic existential tenets of life have, have got all mixed up in, in many cases deliberately. 
of obfuscation and that, that kind of shit never lasts anyway. So um, order will remain and order will be restored. So um, rest assured, as I say, Virgo, um, what's right and true will still be right and true. Okay, Libra. Okay, that jumped out. The star. How lovely. Okay. Be sure, Libra, that better is coming. Be absolutely sure of it. Um, there is nothing to fear. This uh, lady out at night, naked, so secure that she's looking right into the camera. She's not even looking at what she's doing. She's certainly not looking around to see if anyone's watching her <laughs> out there by the waterside, naked under the stars at night. It's safe. You're safe. And the North Star is shining very, very brightly. The world knows which way to go, Libra, and you know which way to go. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful time. It's a wonderful time. Um, enjoy watching the dregs be uh, washed down the drain. Enjoy it, because it's right that they go there. And enjoy watching um, goodness bubble up to the top again. And watching, because it's right that it do so. <laughs> um, and um, allow yourself to um, to be naked in this in this situation, to not be um, over defended, and to feel safe because it's right that you do. Um, Okay, I'm drawn to the fact that there are two jugs here. Um, this is when the angel of temperance with her two jugs has become exalted. This is exalted temperance. This is when the, the inner stillness has become so profound that there is nothing left to fear. I'm going to quote now from... Um, Upanishads, the Vedic texts. The one who sees all things in the self and the self in all things loses all fear. There's no fear. You um, can afford, Libra, to go naked without fear. Okay. Thank you for listening to that. Scorpio. Brave, wild Scorpio. Thought one had jumped out there, but it hadn't. So let's take this one. The full. How lovely, how lovely. Now, I believe it's either the, the new moon on the 16th or the full moon on the 31st of October um, is in your sign. I believe so. Um, there is a, a portal opening up. <laughs> really say things like that very often or very easily there is a portal opening up there is a brand new start um and i won't even say that you've got to keep your eye out for it it will be so obvious it will be so obvious and it will be so it will be so good that it, it it will be so good, it won't even feel good. It will just be completely natural. It won't be like, oh, that looks nice. It's much more profound than that. 
it it's going to feel absolutely natural for this um this new world to open up and for you to walk straight into it um you can afford to um ignore that little dog all right we don't know there's always a little dog with the fool and we don't know whether um whether the little dog travels with the fool or whether it's a dog just kind of yapping at his heels as he walks down the road into his new new paradigm wherever you go as this fool scorpio um it's new it's good it's fresh and um you'll look back you'll look back and it'll just be like why did i ever worry that's what i'm getting why did i ever worry and it will be the, the, it's so profound this transformation that um you won't even sort of kick yourself for having worried it there won't even be any regret about it it will just be more like incomprehension and you know like you say why did i do that and you just go oh well never mind on wood <laughs> okay that's what i'm getting for you scorpio with this wonderful wonderful so embrace it Oof. go for it wonderful wonderful okay sagittarius <laughs> ah, the magician, the magician. Okay. Sag, what am I getting for this for you? Right. Knowing. There's a knowing. There's a knowingness. You're going to recognise exactly what is going on. The first thing I saw when I put, because um, in one of them I've seen all the uh, all the things on the table. In another one I've seen the raised glass. This time I see that look. That is knowing, okay? This, <laughs> this change, out the other side of this change, is a new kind of, a new set of conditions that kind of suit you really, really well. And you're going to recognise them when they come. Because, in a way, this, this, this way of worldliness that is coming to an end, is it's coming to an end because it's false and that falseness has kind of not held you back but it's kind of constricted you in a way um because there's nothing false uh with your enthusiasm and with your your impulsivity and all this is wonderful wonderful energy and you're sort of like naughty fun <laughs> and um, you're going to see this exactly for what it is and it's going to feel really really natural and i think you're going to be able to take um great advantage of what's coming it's yeah, it's it's celebratory, but not celebratory as in some sort of anniversary that's come out. It's just it's going to be a joyful time, a joyful time. So I would say trust your instincts. This magician knows that he is who he is. He knows what he's got on that table, and he knows what he wants to do. And he knows he can. This is the card of I can, the magician. And um, that's what it's going to be for you. And you're going to know it. You're going to know it. And you're going to know it more, more naturally than, um, than you felt it possible to be up until now. Wonderful, wonderful energy for you. So don't, don't pause for thought on this. 
is happy and um, there's a kind of ring of truth about it. When that ring of truth comes, listen to it, let it ring. The ring of truth is always beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Saji. All right. Capricorn. One more for you, Capricorn. Oof, 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 Devil really sticking out, but not popping out. Justice, Capricorn, justice. Okay, now, gravity. What I'm getting here is gravity. I'm getting you sure-footed on the side of the mountain where no other creature can go safely because you know what to do with gravity. You know how it works. You feel it instinctively inside you, in your body and in your psychic body. And it's gravity that works upon um, the scales of justice. So again, a bit like for Sagittarius, this is about trusting your instincts through this time. Um, what falls out of this situation uh, might surprise all of us and might surprise you. Excuse me. But, you know, it will fall out and it will land. It will tumble and it will land. And there will be absolutely no doubt that it is what it is and that it has the mass that it has, which is why it has fallen, tumbled and landed from where, in the way in which and where it has landed and you're just going to see it absolutely for what it is sure-footedness Capricorn absolutely wonderful and um, that which um, lacks gravity which is not necessarily a good or a bad thing but yeah okay a big like sieve shaking out the smaller particles, the bigger particles, it's a sorting, it's a sorting process. And this is going to be very, very active for you. I feel there's going to be a lot of kind of leaping about, a lot of um, not necessarily geographical traveling, uh, probably not. But up here, traveling, a perceptual traveling, as you watch this kind of earthquake <laughs> take place, these tremors happen and stuff being shaken out, shaken down released and um i don't know if i've said this for any of the uh any of the other signs but just be yourself be i think i said it for aries at the beginning be yourself you don't need to be anything other you have the perfect sensing of where the gravity is in this situation um i would just um like to draw your attention to the eye over the heart chakra on the uh, beautiful collar of the dress of the angel of justice. Um, I'm, I'm not saying watch your heart in terms of some sort of warning about, you know, getting hurt or anything, but just do it with heart. Okay, do it with heart because what's occurring through this period is fundamentally about love and about a realigning of um, the truth of love um, away from the uh, fake love. <laughs> what can I say? So this is about love. So do it with love. Watch it with love. Jump around with love and um, stay present in your heart because that's where the gravity really lies in all of us. But you Capricorn are a master of uh, gravity. Of working with gravity. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, Capricorn. Okay, Aquarius. Aquarius. Don't forget 
one more. Wow, the Wheel of Fortune. I thought just for a second it was going to be the world, but it's uh, not next best thing, but not a million miles away from the world, the Wheel of Fortune. <sighs> Queries, what can I say? I um, guess I should say something, seeing as I'm uh, doing this reading. Wow, okay. Now, I think I think part of the reason I'm hesitating here is because the whole theme of this of this reading is um is the collective, and you are the sign of the collective. And uh, okay, you're the only sign I've said this to, so I've got hold on to your hat. Hold on to your hat, Aquarius, because this is um, this is a massive change, a massive change. And I'm seeing something on this card. I've been working with these cards for years and I'm seeing something I have never actually noticed before. Now, what we've got here is the wheel. We've got the angel of fortune with the thunderbolt and the cornucopia. We've got the um, incense burner with the beautiful perfumed smoke being drawn up by the movement of the wheel and the air moving around the wheel, drawing that beautiful perfumed smoke up. And on the other side, we've got the uh, the creature. Can you see it there? Come on, focus, let me see. We've got the creature trying and trying and trying to get up that wheel. But because the wheel is turning in the direction it's turning, and we can see which direction it's turning from the uh, movement of the smoke there, no matter how hard it tries, it's never going to get to the top. And I've just seen, that the, and that this is what's happening. The people who have, have been behaving like this are realising, and just things are falling out. And look, look what's falling out. I've never seen this before. All the wealth falling out of that horn and that beast trying to get it. And scrabbling and scrabbling and scrabbling up that wheel to get a hold of that wealth and those jewels. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. It's not going to... I mean, might grab a couple as it all falls past the animal, but it's never going to happen. The wheel of existence just keeps on turning. Fortunes rise fortunes fall and um yeah for you Aquarius I'm sorry this is kind of it's almost like your reading this whole reading is almost like your reading because this is really happening in your paradigm in the paradigm of the collective um Sorry, words fail me a little bit, and that hasn't happened yet in these uh, in these readings. Saying, uh, telling you to hold on to your hat is just not doing the job, is it? It's not doing the job. <laughs> All right, I've just seen something else here that I've never noticed before. By that pillar with that incense burner on it. Ah, it's not focusing now. It's the handle. And what we don't see, the handle is turning the wheel. And what we don't see in this uh, depiction of the Wheel of Fortune is whose hand or the hand of what is on that handle turning that wheel. It is the hand of God. We all know that. The hand of the universe, the hand of spirit, the hand of the inexorable truth. Just know, Aquarius, whatever is, is going on, the jewels will fall past the beast. And even if the beast got the jewels in his mouth, can't bloody eat them. That beautiful smell will be wafting around <laughs> while the great spirit of truth 
cranks that wheel into uh, into motion. It's your time, Aquarius. It really is. It really is. Sorry if that's not very helpful. <laughs> it's the tarot reader. Sorry if that's not helpful. Sorry if that was just completely vacuous and useless. Enjoy it. Okay, Pisces. All right, this uh, period of change, Pisces, is going to um, invite you to uh, overcome your, your inner child or to understand that your inner child is present and maybe reacting in certain ways and to be a good parent to yourself through this. Um, there may be a part of you, Pisces, that might not really understand what's going on. And, you know, in the same way that children, when, the, when the things go on in the, um, in, the world, in the world of adults, children don't understand it as the adults understand it. They know something's going on sometimes. Sometimes the adults keep it from them. But, you know, most of the time they know when, the, when there's some sort of change afoot. But they don't understand it in the same terms as... Um, the actual change makers themselves, the adults. So, and there's a tendency, Pisces, for the child in, and the, the child here is the lion, all right? It's the wild, untamed part of the of the psyche being um, tamed by, uh, by the adult here. Um, there's a tendency on the part of children when there's change going on and perhaps some elements of it are um, uncomfortable and perhaps frightening or unpleasant or whatever. There's a tendency on the part of children to take it upon themselves, to think that it is about them. And um, it never is. What I will say, though, and what is coming very, very strongly through to me is that um, bad adults will find a way to pin the responsibility for their own failings onto the children because they know, they sense, probably because it was done to them, they sense right down in their gut that the children are vulnerable to taking responsibility for a situation. And bad adults will do that. Um, so I think the invitation here, Pisces, is to see that... Um, There are those who are responsible and there are those who are not. There are those who act in any situation. There are those who act and there are those who are acted upon. And, um, yeah, there's an invitation here to be very, very clear about which one, which of those camps you are in, in any particular facet of what's unfolding here. Um, because... If you if you are in the acted upon camp, but you take on responsibility, if you are not responsible, but you take on responsibility, you do yourself a disservice. If you are responsible and you shirk responsibility, you do others a disservice. And um, speaking as a Buddhist, um, wherein uh, there is no really real meaningful division between self and other all are done a disservice when we're not clear about where the lines of responsibility lie. So that's just coming through for me really, really strongly for you, Pisces. Um, if you didn't break it, it's not your responsibility to fix it. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. And um, I'll see you again soon. Namaste. Nice